Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at another Rage Gaming build. And so we're going to be fixing his best Elden Ring decks. So it should be interesting. In PvE, this is insane burst damage. 6k from standstill, or maybe over 20k in a full combo. That's very impressive. Match that with our Ash of War pick, Thunderbolt. This allows us to benefit from long range lightning, which is very spammable for only 10 FP per use, and scales best with Keen, meaning we can max out our decks for optimal DPS and hit really hard from really far. So this is just an insanely strong build in both sides of the game. Let me show you how and why the basis of the build in pvp there isn't like a lot to say because there isn't like tons of options you just have the standing combo the running attacks as a baseline and maybe some finesse around that and the really effective ash of war to catch people at range or even up close if they think you're going to attack them after a swing so they roll back and then you do a slower ash and that catches them that works too so i found this pretty easy and straightforward to play in pvp extremely effective and very dangerous okay so first thing claws their bread and butter is going to be the R2 and running attacks. The standing combo is pretty bad. The R2 is unreactable and it stuns 118, so it's just going to be a lot better. As for the Ash of War, having a ranged Ash of War and Claws isn't really that important. Having something like Endure or Bloodhound Step would be a better option. Yeah, the insanely strong standing combo of a really quick, fast attacking, successive attack bleed build is obviously going to be good. But we can enhance this with the maximum DPS by starting with a running heavy. That'll do the double strike. So now you've got bleed build up, maybe a proc, and you've got successive hits going already. Then you go into a standing light combo, which just goes really quick in maybe like eight to 10 hits. That's a lot of successive hits. That's a lot of bleed build up. That's a lot of raw damage, especially after the buffs. So it's pretty insane. Anything that can one cycle a new game plus Godric has good DPS. So even though our bleed burst is lower, even though White Mask and Talisman doesn't give us as much AR, this is still strong enough to pull off say 20k burst in a full combo easily and that is very respectable then you have the benefits of say the utility of your range damage with the ash of war whenever you want it not only do you have it pretty damn quick from standstill but it's very solid damage after a few chain casts what i thought would happen would be say like 600 damage per you know a bit of chip damage that's good but you should not underrate this like i did it hits for an insane 1000 or more per use and you can get two to three of these casts off before a boss can recover i don't know why he's using the raptor talons so they are the worst claw in terms of dps if you wanted to use a bleed claw bloodhound claws are going to be good but venomous fang is going to have 100 more dps than them as for the ash of war thunderbolt yes it has more damage on buffed however with buffs it's going to be doing less damage so beast drawer is going to be doing roughly five percent more than thunderbolt despite having a higher base damage it's just so easy to play and so insanely strong i think this might be one of the best if not the best claw build that we could think of right now yeah no so as i've already said venomous fang is higher dps and there's better buffs to use regardless so no it, it's not the best in any capacity here at the point where we need to explain the build so obviously we are using the raptor talons but they're actually in keen we're not using them say in thunder or lightning this is because they actually scale incredibly well with dexterity at an a scaling and that boosts the power of the thunderbolt anyway so it's just really simple synergy we have our weightless seal with the dragon communion seal the white mask for the improved ar that we get when a bleed occurs and as much poise heavy armor as we can get away with with our endurance number i went for the beast champion set with the altered chess piece just for the slight weight reduction for our talismans we have the shell of alexander for ash of war damage successive hits with the rotten wind sword insignia and millicent's prosthesis as well as the five decks that it gives us of course with the bleed build we also have lords of blood's exaltation again more ar whenever a bleed occurs in the flask of wondrous physic we boost our lightning damage and our successive attack power and the incantations of course a golden vow for the damage buff and flame grant strength for the same reason also boost the fire damage we do slightly with the blood flame blade buff so that's very nice and then lastly we have our attribute points 60 vigor for the pvp we do as always i would recommend maybe 50 if you're just doing pve only 16 vigor gets us a nice 100 fp 20 endurance is what's allowing us to wear this heavier armor to actually allow for 
for the poise for trading. We don't level strength at all, and we're at 75 decks that's boosted by 5 to get to the soft cap of 80, thanks to Millicent's Prosesis, the Talisman. Then we have 25 Faith for our incantations to buff our damage, and 10 Arcane to be able to use Blood Flame Blade, and also the Seal. And those are the stats, quite straight. Okay, his build isn't horrible, considering what I've heard about Rage Gaming. Mind is useless. No idea why he has 16 Mind. He has 25 Faith for Golden Vow, Flame Guard with Strength, and Blood Flame Blade. Now, Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength are outclassed by buffs that don't require any faith, so there's no point in really leveling faith for them specifically. And then Blood Flame Blade, he's not using a seal that really scales well with faith, so Blood Flame Blade isn't doing much as far as faith scaling goes. And Dragon Queen Seal, you should be using Frenzy Seal, assuming you're just going to use Blood Flame Blade. For armor, 66 poise is meaningless in PvP, but really you should have 104 poise in PvP. Shard of Alexander is nerfed in PvP, same with Lord of Blood's Excitation, so I'm not sure if I would really recommend it, but for PvE I guess it's fine. Blood Flame Bait isn't that good of a buff regardless, but having 25 faith and not using a seal that scales well off of faith is just absurd. For my improved build, we're gonna have 60 vigor, because that's the vigor soft cap. Base Mind. Mind isn't needed with this build. 27 Endurance. That's going to allow us to wear heavy armor and get 104 poise. We're going to have 20 Strength. That's the first Strength soft cap. Then we're going to have 92 Dexterity. This is past the 80 Dex soft cap. However, there is no other stats that we can invest into that will give us meaningful gains. For our weapons, we have the Keen Venomous Fang, and that's going to be running the Beast Roar, Ash of War. And it's also going to have the Drawstring Poison Grease on it, giving us over 150 poison. For armor, we have the Mushroom Crown, the Tree Sentinel Armor, Blige Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. That's going to give us 104 poise, as well as boost our damage when poison is proc nearby. For the Talismans, we have Bullgold's Talisman, which is going to decrease the poise damage taken. Millicent's Prosthesis, that's going to buff our dexterity and continuous attacks. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which is going to also buff our continuous attacks. Kindred or Rot's Exaltation, which is also going to buff our damage when poison is procced nearby. And then for the Great Rune, we have Radon's Great Rune, which is going to give us more HP, FP, and stamina. And for the Crystal Tears, we're going to have Thorny Crack Tier, which is going to give us a higher continuous attack damage. And Opline Hard Cure, which is going to increase our damage negation. 